I will. Um, I have to make oh, you. Uh, um, uh, oh, Dave okay, Decker. I told yeah. him. I told him to make sure he keeps his Grubhub phone off during the January. Yeah, really. You should, be able to, you should be able to put your camera on. Webinar is now streaming live on YouTube. Okay, you should be able to put your camera on, Catherine. Oh, see right there, live on YouTube. All right, I'm a Zoom newbie, so bear with okay, me. I'll try on the, to get it. Okay on, the, okay, on the bottom left of your... Live on. Okay, you should be able to put your camera on. If you on the bottom left of your... Is all of your information. I know I like it. All right, so... <laughs> see on the bottom left you see where it says stop video do you see that yeah it's giving me a message it says the host has stopped it i don't know what to do with that hmm. let me see ask to start video i don't know i don't know where that came from okay there you are yay okay I don't know Thank what, I don't know. it said ask to start video, but I don't know what I clicked that made you not have a video. So. <laughs> Who knows? I can't, I, can't, I can't even pretend I know why that happened. <laughs> All right, I'll mute my video now. Okay. Oh, you don't have to mute it. You can, yeah, if you want to. Oh, I wish okay. there was a way for icons to appear. Right. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Let's see how I'm on the screen. I'm small. Let's see how big it is. I need to be There's not so many people, so. There it is. Oh, this the the, the picture is awful. You're right, Don. I'm gonna record this, and then we can upload a really clean, clean image. Yeah, because yeah. the image is really, ugh, it's awful. All right, I'm gonna record. How do I record? Bottom of metal. Yeah, right over is here. Is it too late now? Good. Yeah, but I'm already. Right. There's a button to the right of the word chat. Oh, like record it. on this computer. Record to the cloud. Okay. Karen, are we muted? Yeah. Let me unmute you one second. It was just really loud in your room. There we go. No, you're not muted. If if I can. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus. If I can respond to you, you're not muted. Yes, I was going to say, how can you hear me if I'm muted? Oh, hey, <laughs> how are you doing? If you need a chair, it's in there. We have a lot of people here today. Yeah, so are we recording? Okay, we're recording and we're live. It's just I, oh, the picture's better. If you have a full screen on... Um, YouTube, the picture's pretty, pretty, pretty fuzzy. But if, so I'm recording it because I, I can see you guys all very clear in the Zoom, but I don't see it very clear on YouTube. So probably we'll, hi, Lilypad. Probably we will um, upload a different version. I don't know. Anywho, hi. <laughs> are you there, Don? Are you there, Jim? Yes. Okay. So, do you want to take um, you want to take some requests for people? Yes. Yes. Let me open the chat. Where's the chat? Sorry. I don't know where the chat is. Where's the chat? Okay, I got it. Just down, down on the line. I got it. I got it. So who wants to, who are the requests for today? Grindel or Ish. Grindel or Ish, okay. Grindel or Ish, okay. Yeah. Anybody in the room want to request anybody? I see Michael. Gabriel. My, uh, Michael and Gabriel. Or Metatron. Metatron. Oh, three angels from the room. Okay, Michael gave so that okay, okay, so the archangels. Okay, Michael, David, and Meta, uh, Michael, Gabriel, and Metatron. Metatron. Can we come all at once and, and one. No, I don't think so. Probably not. Okay. <laughs> Probably not. 
I reach up with a request. Oh, David. Did he say David? Michael David? I thought it was Michael Gabriel. It's no, no. Michael Gabriel and Metatron. All Archangels. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me real well? Very perfect. All right. So, because I moved the Yeti a little closer. Awesome. Anyone else? I do have a question. Uh, uh, being named Novak. Novak? Yes. And what, and what species? Supposedly he is of a reptilian uh, spec. I just like him because when he travels <laughs> through someone like Avon Teller, he says things so matter of factly. He's of a funny. reptilian? Yes. Uh, is he an Eliashandai Zendi or a, or one of uh, the Zespoids or which one? You uh, know? I think he's a Zespoid. I'm not okay, sure. that would be in Grindel's race. Do right. you know how to spell that? Zespoid? S-E-S-P-O-I-D. When I listen to him, that's the image I get my... We just brought open the portal. He's a has a human characteristics that just has okay. uh, scary. Yeah. Oh, um, just just for the people on YouTube that are watching, um, we're we're just not quite started, but because of the new format using uh, Zoom instead of Google Hangouts, we decided we we're going to start opening the room a few minutes and let you see what we do before we actually start the webinar. So, in fact, we haven't officially started; we're just in our beginning stages of starting. Are- the other thing for everyone to remember: just one thing is that because of Zoom, you cannot speak over each other. So if you're talking to people in the room, Jim, and someone here is speaking, one of you gets very, you both get very muted and you can't really hear the other one talk. So this is kind of radio rules. Wait till the person finishes talking to respond. Wait till the other one talks to ask a question, just for future future Zoomy, Zoominess. No, Okay. Was there any other requests? Yes. Debrucy. Somebody asked for somebody named Debrucy. Was that what, is that what the D is in David? Or yeah, D is in David. E B R U S I. And it's a collective? It's a collective or a group? Okay. It was the Debrucy and the Nasuri yesterday, last, last week. Oh, Nasuri. The Brucey and the Yeah, they came together. Oh, they came together. Okay. Well, at the same time, they mm-hmm. also be the right one. Okay. I'm just. I'm just adding the people who are arriving late. <laughs> okay. Zoom keeps kicking me out. It mm-hmm. does. That's interesting. With a message to pay. <laughs> really? It's suggesting that I pay. Okay, well, th- we'll talk about that later. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so, okay, Cesare de Brucey Collective. What was the other one that you said, Don? Nasari. Nasari. N A S U R I. N A S. Nasari. Okay. Was there anyone else that had one? Uh, Horus, you can put Horus on the list. Is it Who? Horus. How do you spell it? Oh, H O R R O S. Oh, Horus. Horus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love Horus. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that everyone? Okay. All right, here we go. So <clears throat> I'll just do it here like this. I just, everyone ready? Everyone okay. on the YouTube ready? We need to get blessings too after Yeah, we're, Yeah, who's going to do the blessings? Um, I can do one. Ben will do one. Don will do one. I can also do one. Okay. okay. Reinhardt will do one. Okay. Anyone else? If your pic, if your picture is not there, I can't see you. If you want to do one, so you have to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. write it in the queue. 
how do you want to do uh, questions that, like in the room? How do you want to let? Well, I mean, the questions in the room, your room is fine. People can type in the chat just like they've done before. Yeah, but how do you want us in the room to let you know that we... Well, usually you guys will just kind of say to the being that we have a question, right? So I think we should just... Are you okay with that still? Yeah, because because um, because I will... I have, it, I have it on so everyone can see everyone at the moment, but... Um, once we get started, it, it'll be like a, like this. Yes, right. We're, yeah. we're spotlight on just Jim. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me stop my spotlight here. Oh. Do I have the... Oh, where did we lost Jim? No, I'm still here. I'm still here. You guys see him? Is he hiding again? We can't see him either. Where'd Most yes. We see his name only. Stop our video. You stopped our video, yeah. How did I do that? <laughs> there, powerful. I got it. Your energy is just All right, there you go. Yeah. Powerful. I'm powerful. I'm super powerful, but I don't even know why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Here we go. All right. So hello, good afternoon, and welcome. It, just are we on the? We're on the. Um, we're on the. Uh, I, I can watch it in the YouTube and see what we are doing. Okay, great. So hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the twenty seventh of July, two thousand nineteen, and we have in our room, we have Catherine, Deb, we have. Um, Reinhard, Dawn, Daniel, Ava, Stephanie, and Christine, and some other people. You can't see them, but they are definitely here. We have Stephanie driving her car. That's pretty awesome. And my name is Karen. Who do you have in your room, Jim? I have Angie and Erica and Margie and James and Ray and David and Jack. <laughs> So it's a full it's a full house over there. Great. Yes, it okay. is it's a full house over here. All right. So why don't we start we'll start with the blessings? Do you have anyone in your room that's going to do a blessing? I do not know. Yes. Yes, David will do a blessing in our okay. room. Okay. We'll start with Don. We'll go to Reinhardt and then to and then to Deb. Thanks. Okay. Blessings. Be bright when dealing with the world around you, for they may need your brightness today. They need, may need a shot of positivity so that they may go on in a better way. And you may be the answer to the question of their attitude for this particular day. Thank you. As you move forward, and you know that there is no such thing as time, you are taking all things forward with you. This is an important time for your world. Remember to bring things forward as quickly as possible. Thank you. Aika o naita o akaito, usita kaiso o naita. Aiko o na naito o a a o kahito to sa yata ito naiko o a o kahito para siya da o maiko o a a to tayo sa yata o a to toy a o kahito o tayo a maiko o a a. Many of us are waiting for important decisions to be made. Please move forward so that these decisions can be done sooner rather than later. Interaction with your world is important for us. 
And in your room? Go ahead. Itia hana to cuckooish, she may have tawa tea. Crew in the attack a rat to cuckooish, kin at the way she and a hatta. Oh, Nama at the skirt to cuckoo at the way she, cuckoo and tikia hasso. Oh, near at the crew it to a hasha, kid it to cuckoo a matash, kid it to cuer his ear, sure or not at the way she. The Spirit of God be with you, and brightness to you, and love and obedience to God. Remember also that healing is important at this time, and that the healing spirit be upon you, so that you may open up and bring others closer to an understanding of the energy of God, of the fullness and richness that he has. Thank you. Thank you. So today, uh, just before we get started, just to make an announcement, there's still time to sign up for the Ascension Workshop, is there not? Yes, there's still time, and yeah. it's it's filling up, but yeah. we need a few more. I would like to see a few more of you there, and um, it's going to be a really wonderful time, and I'm really excited about it. I'm studying and learning quickly a lot of new things and yeah. I've been given a lot of new information to share so especially the hand signs the galactic hand signals there's 21 different hand signals that we're oh going my. to and um, we're going to be uh, learning white magic some the early stages the beginning uh, and we're going to be learning that from Merlin and Corkellan and so um there's many things that are happening, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, oh, so many things I can't even remember. <laughs> so it is, um, it's going to be a wonderful time, and it will be a time for you to get to know people from around the world. There's people from uh, different places, some place I can't even pronounce. There's Sylvania. someone, Sylvania, is that yeah, it? Sylvania. Is somebody from Sylvania is coming? Oh, uh, there well. may be somebody from Ireland coming. There are definitely people from Canada coming and people from all over the United States. So it will be a good time. If you're going to have trouble financing this, please let us know. We do. We can have you pay in installments if you wish. Mm -hmm. And um, we would love for you to come. I think that if your heart is like saying that you should be there, well, then you should be. So the, um, the, the Ascension Workshop is August 8th through the 12th. It's yes. $475, and you can find all about it on YouTube, on YouTube, on Hukalo.org. <laughs> you can find out all about it on Hukalo.org and sign up. I, I'm sorry, I interrupted you while you no, were No, it's talking. no problem. I was laughing at myself because I tell people. <laughs> Go to YouTube, find the information. The 8th through the 12th, and it's 575. When we talk at the same time, we uh, yeah. take each other out. So yeah. no I just problem. wanted to repeat that because I was talking at the same time as she was. So. Sorry. No problem. So, okay. I'm just going to make sure I, have, I make this. Uh, let me see. Do this. Okay. There. Okay. I just want to make sure that the camera was trained on you and <laughs> we can see you. So, <laughs> uh, the, these are the people that we had that were requested. Um, we have Grindel Ish, uh, Archangels Michael, Gabriel, and Metrotron, Metatron, uh, Novak, which is a reptilian, uh, Debrusi, which is a collective, and then Nasuri, and then Horus. That was all that we had. Wow, very cool. Yeah. All right, let's see. I know Isaac, um, um, my oh, friend is coming today, oh. Elijah. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, perfect. Elijah's always welcome. Elijah will come first, and then everybody, then maybe some of those people. I'm not sure which ones, but they'll line up, and whoever has the best message will come through next. Perfect. Okay. Have a good oh. time, everyone, and blessings to you. Blessings to you.
Greetings, I am Elijah. Today I wanted to talk to you about change. There is much change coming in the future. And many of you feel like you are prepared for it. But that may not necessarily be true. There are times coming that are not foreseen and not able to be foreseen. But your own personal lives will be affected. And some of them for the better and some of it for not so good. But it is that it will be for the glory of God eventually. There are also changes for me coming. There are those that will say that what I have been saying is not true, that it's a different Elijah than the past. It's a different message than the Elijah from the past, that there, are crit there will be criticisms of it. They will say that the truth is not there, but yet God's truth is within this. He has a desire to show his people his true self and his true meaning. He is accepting of all peoples. He does not discriminate one to another. He does not force you to take up a cross necessarily for him in that way, but to be obedient in the ways that he asks. He does not want you to suffer. But if suffering comes, he will be there with you and lift you up, give you strength, give you that which is necessary to go through what is necessary for the will of God. Now, there are new informations coming. These informations have never been heard before. So prepare yourself for them. I will not reveal them at this time, but they are very different and they are very important. God has waited for the right time to reveal these things. You may say, oh, it is the thoughts of the revelation, but it is not that. It is something completely different. God's love be with you. Accept him for who he is. He is the purest light. He is the purest understanding and does not carry any darkness with him. You see that in the Old Testament where I was, that there is much darkness and rage and fire and brimstone that has, that has been shown to be of God, but it is not his way to be that way. It is not of God to, to send down fire and brimstone upon his people, but forgiveness. Of course, many of you believe in judgment. But what does he say? Judge not, yet lest you be judged. So why would God say for you not to judge and for himself to be the only judge? Because he is God? His only judgment is against those who turn away from him and do not want any part of him then he lets them go to be where they want to be, to do what they want to do. But remember, separation from God is death. That's the meaning of death, separation from God. So if they choose death, then that is what they will be, dead. Dead to the spirit that is God, that is life as we know it. Do not fear death because you have not chosen it. Do not fear death for you have not chosen death, but life. 
he will come and bring change. This earth as you know it is filled with negativity. Some may say good and bad, but those are the wrong words. Some may say positive and negative. But what words are true? You must know that from each situation. Look at it, pray about it, and do not judge it. But send energy of love and healing to it if it does not seem to be what it is supposed to be. Even with things that seem negative, positivity may be born of it. So like I said, do not judge it. Accept it, but pray for it to be what God's will is for it. I know I seem a little obscure today in how I speak and how things are going to be, but the change is upon us and it's not far away. But I need to prepare you for it. I need to speak about it. I need for you to understand that it's going to be part of your being, in your heart. You will know this change and it will have to be something that the world accepts eventually. It can not go on the way it is. For if it goes on the way it is, it will surely bring a close to this population. And that is not the will of God. So there must be changes so that opening for life continue. Oh, of course, if people uh, pass on, their energy moves forward, of course, always, unless you choose otherwise. But be, be encouraged. Be of good faith. Be of positivity. Be of all things that are good. All things that bring goodness. And Thank you. Lift one another up. This is a time when you need strength in each other. Because it is a time when things, uh, many people are low and tired and fatigued because of the things of the world, of the things of the universe, bearing down on them, but lift one another up. I know that future generations will try to tear my words apart and say that they were not true and say that my agenda was not positive. But it will endure because God will lift it up. That is all I have to say for today. The love of God be with you. Fellowship kindly one with another. And do not speak ill of each other behind each other's backs. Do not say that there is negativity afoot when you are not sure of that to be true. Mm. Listen not to those that bring negativity to the world, but they are trying to deceive and trying to bring low that which is positive. They will say things that are not true to bring you out of your good spirit and bring you out of your good faith. Do not listen to it. Do not listen to the conspiracy theories because they are only conspiring to deceive. 
the truth they are not saying. When someone is speaking of conspiracy theories, the truth behind it is not being spoken. The truth behind it is being secluded, is being hidden away so that you will follow that thought process to an end that you do not see. All right, I should stop. I could preach all day, but I choose not to do that. Others need to come through and speak their truths as well. Be blessed and know that God is with you. Be blessed and listen to the positive words because the positivity will save you and not the negativity. Know that God is preparing you in very positive ways to overcome negativity and that if it so exists in your lifetime with you, that God is there to handle it with you. I speak very carefully because it is a time when things will be torn to shreds if not spoken correctly. And there could be things I've already spoken incorrectly because your realm is so aptly prepared to destroy it. But love and honor continue. Faith in God continue. And love, 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 the greatest gift of all continue. Be well. Goodbye for now. And may God richly bless you. Thank you, Elijah, and blessings to you. Yeah. Mm. Who who do we have here? Yeah, yeah who do you think? <laughs> it's it's yeah. either Fozzy Bear or it's Grendel. I'm not sure. Yeah, I have to offset that last speaker. <laughs> I mean, not in a bad way, but in a a little bit of a relief mm. from the little bit of heaviness that was there. So yes, hello everyone. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome. welcome. Lovely to be with you all. I want to say this first, though. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that he was saying were wrapped in a little bit of mystique and mystery. And I understand that because of where it's coming from. There is new information coming, and very few people know about it yet, but it will be far reaching. Mm -hmm. So I will say that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to say is, pre yes, continue to prepare yourself uh, because the future is an interesting and uh, uh, new place, and we would love to be there. So hopefully we'll get there soon. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, we have a bunch of questions. All right. Oh, as soon as I come on, of course. Everyone loves to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first question we have is from Sheer. Go ahead, Sheer. Greetings, Sheer. Yeah. Hey, Lindo. How are you? I am well, thank you. Overworked, but well. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Um, well, first of all, I've done all of, all of my tests. So now I'm going to <laughs> the final project, but uh, I still have to get my... Um, to get a grade on the last test, it's going to yeah. take a few weeks if you can work your magic. Well, you passed everything, so <laughs> you know you have. So it's it's just a matter of getting through it. You know what you're doing. You know all the all the information, uh, the way you need to know it. So uh, you have your own take on it as well. How it's going to help you with the future. So. Keep moving forward, and yes, you're going to pass the test. I will help. I, 
uh, I won't be grading it, but I will be uh, there to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. And also, um, my mother and yeah, doctors right. found something there. Uh, anyway, she's going to meet the doctor that uh, operated on her a few years ago. And I, I don't really know what it is that they found. It was something that has to do with cancer a few years ago. Yes. They remove it. And now uh, they saw that there's something else. And I think right. it's less severe, but... Still, she's going to her uh, operating doctor on Monday, and yeah. she asks if uh, basically if everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be fine. We're, there's a lot of people watching over her, and she's going to be just fine. And tell her not to worry. Be as relaxed as she can be. We're going to give her an inf a relaxation infusion before she gets there, and so she'll be a little more calm. I know she's worried about it, but all things, uh, it, this is not a serious operation. Uh, they did find something, but it, it, they can remove it, and it's going to be fine. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Tell her not to worry. I will. Yeah, yeah. Who's next? Uh, we have Ava next. Go ahead, Ava. Hi, Grinda. So nice to not see, um, no see you yeah. i don't see you okay so i hope you come to the workshop and you you tell us all kinds of things oh i'll be at the workshop there's no question yeah that's wonderful um i have a question and i will try to put it in general terms or so, or but sometimes difficult but i try my best so there are a lot of these um attacks on people like myself um i think it's the wasa Greycos. Wasa Draca. They are very, the thing is, let me tell you about Wasa Draca right now. They're regrouping because uh, seventh dimensional beings have put protection around the earth. They put protection around some of the beings on the earth. And the Wasa Draca has not been able to fully attack the way they want to. So they're going back and regrouping and uh, trying to figure out how they can get through. I'm sure them being seventh dimensional, they'll be able to uh, find a way because they're working with actually higher dimensional beings at this time, which is something that they have not done before. Uh, but um, I'm sure they'll find a way to get through, but they haven't yet. So it's good that the attacks are small. Um, they're not life threatening at this point but they are painful at some points because but they're all real fast attacks from the wasa draca they just like hit and move on because that's all they can do because as soon as they hit everybody knows where they are everybody knows what's going on and so the the seventh dimensional beings el yaha all elohim everybody comes to the rescue so there are attacks happening. There's no question, but they're in much less uh, harmful degrees than they used to be. Well, the reason I am talking about it because yesterday I was attacked to the point of fainting from pain, hitting my head. Um, and I yeah. know that it was an attack because also an hour later I was repaired to like 90%. So this is extreme, you know? Yes. And my question is, I'm trying to make it general. Is there anything we can do on personal level, maybe activating yeah. Haba protection? Maybe is there anything I can do? Because this was horrible. I fainted. Yes, that was an attack for sure, but it was a quick one. What they do is open up portals right next to your body and attack and then leave. Um, what happens is the seventh dimensional beings will have to put their little coating around your body so that it doesn't get through without them. They can still attack, but it's always very fast and it's always as violent as they can be, but they can't stay and do any further harm 
because they're no everyone knows where they are as soon as they attack. So um, there's really nothing you can do about these portals. They are very cleverly designed to open up right by you and attack and then close. So Merkaba wouldn't help. Well, we're they're working on other solutions for that, mm -hmm. but right now they do not have one because uh, they do have the the protection around people. They have protection around the earth, but these uh, wormholes that they open up or whatever they are, they pass through all this without detection. And then they open up, attack, and then close. So they, it's very clever. Uh, so they have to find a way to detect them before they get to the humans. And they, at this point, they haven't been able to. I don't know how. All right, so um, can you please ask for some protection for me because it's been oh, so yes. absolutely unbelievable uh, okay and it's sad but i cannot do it myself much about it okay well thank you so much i think each of us uh needs the relaxation infusion by the way so <laughs> if we could you know you can like spray it around if that's yes. possible. The actual, uh, the El Yaha and even um, Girk Fitnir now has it, the relaxation infusion. The yes. reason why they give it is to calm people down before they treat them so that people will be at their a calm level uh, and, and while they're working on them. Yes. And it's, it's been an amazing thing uh, because as soon as um, they say, you the relaxation infusion and they started will feel it immediately and are relaxed yeah and they'll go how do you feel and they're going wow that was really great ah, wow so um i never felt it i never uh, why relax me why, um, i don't need relaxed i don't i need to be stirred up all the time so um um Actually, no, that's not true. Well, with the uh, changes on the planet, we all might need it. Okay, thank yes. you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day there, my dear. You too. There's a question in the room. Do you have a lot of questions out there? I can't hear you. I said we have questions in the chat, but let the room go first. All right, what do you want? in why um, all these beings attack are they unhappy what is their purpose oh if with like with the sense that if they're aware of the laws of the universe that everything you put out comes back to you it would just seem kind of foolish to do negative beings don't uh, negative beings don't care if negativity comes back to them like that that's their realm so yes if negativity is there that is their realm. That's what they feed off of. So that's, I, I really don't want to talk about negativity too much, but um, yeah, they don't care about that. No. Just wanted to understand why they care. Yeah. Okay, we have some uh, questions in the chat, if, if you're ready, or do you have another one in the room? No, I was just going to say, uh, when uh, negativity attacks, they're trying to destroy positivity you see because they want negativity to be the realm of everything but it's uh, it's not going to be that way so okay all right so we have some in the uh, some what do you call it yeah. <laughs> questions in the room okay uh, yeah what? oh this is from Mark Zinzal he wants to know what do you see, Grendel, as the most likely solution for climate change? Um, terraforming. But no, seriously, I feel that uh, there are ways to take some of these chemicals out of the air, and there are ways to recreate atmospheric conditions. So, but your people do not know how to do that quite yet, at least properly. Um, but what will eventually happen is that a there's several different scenarios that you could look at a people will move off the planet uh that's just a natural thing eventually but 
B, they will learn how to read and invent the atmosphere so that it will be uh, in a good shape. Uh, C, they will learn to take the impurities out of the atmosphere so that it will not destroy the atmosphere anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and D, they will discover who is actually putting toxins other than themselves into your atmosphere and trying to terraform the planet. There are those that would have this planet terraformed so that to fit a different species and get rid of the hum human species, but that's not going to happen, I don't think. There's way too much protection around your world and way too much value in your population. So there's much value here. Can I, can I say something about that? Of course. Um, one of the most basic things that we can do as a, as a humanity is plant trees because yeah. um, the trees, each tree, each oak tree gives back to the earth 40,000 gallons of water a year. Um, and well, we, the other thing that we could do is we can limit our meat consumption because it takes as much meat, I mean, as much water to, uh, to produce one meal of meat that it takes one person to have showers for six months. And I'm not making it up in Chennai right now by 2020, which is basically tomorrow. Um, they're already having 40% less water than they need. Um, they're in a, they're in a terrible situation by 2040, the world will have 70% less water available than is necessary. And by 2080, we will have more than 700,000, excuse me, 700 million people that are water refugees because of not access. And most of this can be prevented by planting trees, by less gas emissions from the production of meat. It's really simple, and these are facts. So, so, and they're very things that can be done by people right now. So I just want to uh, Also, growing trees uh, puts oxygen back into the atmosphere as well. So yeah. uh, not only does it return water to the atmosphere, but it returns oxygen to the atmosphere. Okay. So plants of all kinds and trees of all kinds do yeah. that. Yeah. So. Yet natural abundance is uh, where, where you're heading. But your planet is actually tearing, uh, getting rid of trees and doing all this thing. But yes, planting trees is a beautiful thing. If everyone would start planting trees, it would be great. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, let's see. The next question we have is from Ecclesiast. He said, He's asking about faces of beings that he experienced in Pumapunko and uh, Kalasayana temples in Bolivia. Was it a pure coincidence or by design? Bless no, that's by design. There's a lot of uh, South America is one of the great homes of the aliens from the past. And Pumapunka is one of the examples of their ingenuity. There's, there's no way that that was made by humans. Uh, Puma Punka is so uh, perfectly made. You can even see where there were drill bits and there was machinery used to make it. So if you look closely enough, you can find uh, where there's uh, markings in the stone that shows it was impossible for them to use their ancient equipment, ancient Stone Age uh, tools to make this place. And there's several places in South America and all over the world that are like this. But Puma Punka is one of the sterling examples because it is so perfect. Also, yes, the aliens that were there to make this, it was a landing strip, by the way, Puma Punka is a is a landing strip and also a control center for other things as well. But the faces that you saw there, uh, they're still there. 
they're they still inhabit these areas, but they're not in oh, uh, your dimension. They're in a different dimension, but they still are there. Um, others have experienced them when they go to Machu Picchu or the uh, uh, Cusco or di different places. They experience these aliens that are in other dimensions and mm -hmm. um, because they are sensitive to them and they're still there. Interesting. Um, thank you for that. Uh, this is a nice question. Uh, it's from, oh, shoot, wait, wait, hold it. <laughs> it's from Kuda. I don't think I've ever seen a question for that person before, but it says, um, is it possible for a computer data to be stored interdimensionally rather than on a hard drive? He was saying that he thinks it could be a really good, uh, an infinite storage space for data. Of course. Yeah. <clears throat> they already exist around your planet even. The cloud is an example of that. But there is even greater systems of uh, storage uh, in astral that have been uh, built for infinite uh, storage of information. The Akashic records are an example of that as well. Yeah. Okay, um, there's a question that says, uh, 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 Lucia said, can Grindel give a relaxing infusion to everyone here? Well, I don't do that, but I can have someone do it. Uh, the Eliaha can do that, or uh, Gert McNear can do that, Tepeth on the ship. But um, I don't personally have that equipment. But I can have them do that for you if you wish. Uh, they are listening in. They listen to all these webinars and broadcasts. So um, if you're listening, go ahead. Yeah. If, if you want an infusion, please ask. If you do not, then please also say you do not want one. It's you know what? You have to sit still. If you're not sitting still, you won't get one. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. All right, um, there is a question from, from AJ, and it says, um, yeah. Yeah. it says, have problems with eyesight and similar things in the human body been so prevalent throughout all history, or has this sudden influx of people needing glasses and contacts a new development? No, that's always been to some extent. Well, but it is, has increased in the later era because of pollution and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Earlier in, there has been blindness since the beginning of time, and there has been um, a visual, visual problems. It has gotten worse, yes, with pollution, uh, with uh, drugs. Aging population? Yes, drugs, like parents are taking drugs before they have their children, and. And that does affect eyesight. It affects different things in uh, the reproductive system. So, uh, so children are born that are a little weaker, perhaps, or a little less able. But now children are being born with higher IQs, mm. which is something different that's been added to the atmosphere. Uh, the uh, all the different wavelengths and different things are actually uh, absorbed by the mother, but they're also filtered so that they can be, a, they're a little safer for the child and not as safe for the mother. But it, the, these waves don't get through to the, the womb as easily. So they're sort of filtered and some of them are very good for brain waves. Okay, perfect. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? I, I don't see any more in the um, in the chat, and I don't see any in, in, in our room. Oh, that's, a, that's because I'm losing popularity. Yeah. Uh, you are not. I have, no. I have a Who question. I have a question. Who is that? Christine. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Um, when you had said, um, Grindel, when you had said that um, these beings – um, in another dimension still exist among those what we call ruins, what do they see the buildings as? Because we see them as 
partially together or some of it fallen down and whatnot, do they see it still together or? No, they are protectors. These, these ancient megalithic uh, constructs will be put back into use in the future. At least that's what they're hoping. The Orions were the origins of some of it. And so Orions are still there. Um, they are part of the past that were, were the creators of some of these incredible things. And so they protect it to make sure that mankind won't touch it. But they are there. And there's other species there as well. Pleiadians are there. Uh, the Arcturians sometimes. But or Orions and Pleiadians are are always there protecting their work. Remember, do you remember um, in the past, somebody from one of those sites had come through and had asked us to help them protect or to prevent one of the doors from and being opened? It has been protected. They got into the main cavern, but there is a secondary cavern that they did not get into. And okay. that is the one that was uh, needed to be closed. It's not visible to the naked eye. You would have to do a sonogram or whatever it's called to detect this uh, space. So, but no one has found it yet. And that is a good thing. So it's a good, yes. everything's good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, there's uh, some more questions in the chat. I'll just go through them. Um, Angel of Vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. Uh, 777 wants to know if there will be a California mega earthquake before the end of 2019. Well, all right. Mm. That's telling the future, which I'm not allowed to do. But let me tell you this. The earthquakes in California are not finished yet. There has been a 7.1. There's been a 4.4. There's been several other very small ones. The tectonic plates are realigning. There's no question about that. And um, there could be more, yes. And could there be a megalithic, or an, uh, a gigantic earthquake? There could be. There are two plates that are, uh, we don't know how they're going to go together yet, but if they go together in a very bad way, and slip, they're going. There's going to be problems. Okay. Let's hope for the best. Oh, there's a question in the room. Do you want me okay, to? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Who is it? It's me. Oh, oh um, hello. So Elijah talked about not believing the conspiracy theories. Um, I'm wondering about the elite and human and children sacrifice. Is that a conspiracy theory? Because it feels pretty true to me. There is truth in that. However. They want you to, uh, they want you to uh, become part of that negativity. Okay. They want you to be involved in it so that it brings you down. Okay. Do not. They will be saved. There are many different things that are actually happening in the world that are bad or or negative. I don't know if bad is the world right word or negative. What whatever your human word is for it, but. There are many, there are many things that are happening in your world that need to be stopped. They, there are people working on that, and send your prayers toward that, and send your, uh, your yeah. energy toward that yeah. because it really needs uh, to see the light. Yeah. It's a lot of it's coming to light. I mean, yes, a lot it of it's, is. Coming to light. it's being uncovered and taken dealt with. So that is a good thing. And more of that will happen. Yeah. Yes, yes, it will be dealt with. Okay. Um, let me see. But you don't know. focus on all these negative things. Right. It does no good. Send your energy, be aware of it and send your positive energy to it. Okay. Make sure you're sending something positive to it, not, not reinforcing it. By going, oh, that's so horrible. Uh, I have but, a nice term for you about that. Yeah. 
when you send energy, like through meditation, you're working in the subtle field. So you can be like a subtle activist and really use your, you know, your mind power, your mental oh, intention to send. <laughs> you have a little subtle sign for that, like I'm an activist. <laughs> you I'm can a... maybe give us one. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. Peace, man. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, subtle signs, little signs like this big. Subtle activists, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what Wait. does that say? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Moonlight Rose says, Grendel, you're awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, we all know that, but okay. Okay. Uh, Safira says, um, yeah. She had a friend have an alien come to her door and put implants in her hand because they are apparently not allowed to do otherwise. And she says, how can they be allowed to do that, come on earth to do that? They walked in. There's, there were, that was, had to be a walk-in. It wasn't a true alien. It was a human body with a walk-in that was there. But they... They can come to Earth in other dimensions. It can happen, yes. So is it like a bleed or do they, like you said with Ava, do they kind of pop in and pop out or? Yes. Like but in, this case, in, in this case, it was um, a walk-in that had an agenda and followed through with the agenda and then left the body. Gotcha, okay. I hope that answered your question. Uh, but it had to be a willing, willing person that that would uh, let them do that. So. so basically, they came, they dropped off some uh, implants. <laughs> so they, now you have yes, to do it yourself. You know? Actually, it's happened more than once. Yeah. <laughs> do they come with like instruction manual? Yeah. They, they, here. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are certain people they want to keep totally. Uh, distraught and down and uh, because otherwise their energy would affect a lot of people. So, I understand, but if you hand somebody the implants, the person could just be like, okay, well, thank you so much. They shake hands with them. They just shook hands with them. That's how they put the implants in. Oh, I see. I see. I thought they didn't like sit there and go, oh, here's one. No, here's one. That's what her thing says. It says they came by and put them in the hand. There was a, a handshake. That's how it was. Oh. <laughs> I thought they like they dropped it. No, no, no machinery. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody standing there and letting them do that? I don't well, think. Saying, well, people ask yeah. for infusions. Why wouldn't they ask for implants? Yeah. Well, they ask for good implants. Yeah. For positive implants. Whatever mm -hmm. the word is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, there's another question here. It says, um, do you, okay. Moonlight, yeah. Moonlight Rose is asking, do you know anything about the RH negative factor? I think that's, that's the blood, the blood type, I guess that is. Yes. If you have O negative, uh, you probably have some RH in there too. This is an alien, uh, blood type. That's all. Okay. It's very, in, very simple. It's not a blood type that was that they are able to uh, go back in time and discover where it started. It just happened. Hmm. So it is an alien blood type. Rh uh, negative, I think it is an O negative. Okay. Um, then there's a question that says, um, if possible. Oh, let me see. Uh, if God, if the a God Ahura Mazda and Mar and Marduk get to meet kings and leaders that worship them like King Cyrus, Arterex, and Ezra in the afterlife realms? Uh, what? I don't know. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Let me, um, try it again. Let me try it again. Yeah, I don't, I, it didn't sound like a question. Well, this was the question. If the god Ahura Mazda uh, Yeah. And, and the god Marduk, Marduk, yeah. get to meet kings and leaders that worship them like King Cyrus did and like Arterexus did and like Ezra did in the afterlife realms. Yeah, they will. Uh, yeah, you have to remember this. 
Those names will transmute through time and space. Those are just names that they were given in the earthly realm or you know of in the earthly realm. Many of those names, uh, many of those people have many, many names. And in different eras of, of uh, different areas of the space and time, they have different names. But yes, the answer would be yes. Okay. Um, there's a question from uh, Heather. And Heather, I think you should remove that because you put someone's private name in that chat. You might want to take it out. Um, it says, I know a child that seems angry or traumatized since birth. Can you tell me what's affecting her? Um, and also, can you tell me or advise her about helping children? She works with preteens. So um, the child's name is Marley. I'm not going to give you her last name. Don, right. remove that message from Heather uh, in the right. chat. So the thing is... Because um, it's, a, it's a minor, so please take her name out of there. There are several reasons why children are disturbed uh, at birth. Some of it is because of chemicals in the mother's system when she was pregnant, perhaps drug use, alcohol use, uh, and different kinds of wavelengths all uh, coming together in a in a negative way or in a way that did not uh, bring forth the most positive outcome. Mm -hmm. Now, anger is usually a part of uh, the personality of the, the parents. If there is a lot of disruption going on in the parental uh, realm, then there can be anger that's being also brought to the child through the body. Anger is something, uh, emotions are something that ch children can feel through uh, the uh, fetal period, whatever you want to call that. Um, they pick up the emotions of their parents. They also pick up if the parent has a negative kind of job and there's negative people around, they pick up on that as well. So that could be one of the reasons why there, there is um, a, a anger with the child or it seems very disrupted in thought process. So what you need to do with this child is to uh, bring it into a very positive realm, a, a very positive uplifting realm, and also uh, a an artistic realm with soft music, uh, things that calm the spirit, things that are uh, mainly positive for attitude and thought process, uh, reading of good uh, materials and, and things of this nature. But like I said, this is often environmental uh, where, where the child was brought through in an un, unusual or a different kind of environment. You are not on speaker. I said, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's a question from Lucia. Yes. Go Lucia. She has to, she yes, has to. Hello, sorry, okay. I was having trouble around. Um, Unmuting there. Hello, Grindel. How are you doing? Well, and yourself? I'm doing better. I don't know if you're aware. I've been going through a lot. And it's true. There's being a cleanup happening and uh, with relationships. And just, um, I think there's, a, there's like a mini war going on right now, just in general. Not just about me, but just, I'm just observing now, actually. I've landed. So now I'm like looking around and just observing and uh, waiting to see how things are going to kind of turn out about several things um, without going into detail. But uh, what Elijah said earlier was really spot on. Um, you know, I, um, I'm looking, this might be of interest to other people as well. It's just that we're talking about earthquakes in the States, in California. Then we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, things that, or to come um, in the world in general. Now, for the Middle East, 
I am just wondering if there are safe places to live in the Middle East, because honestly, we might move in that area. And I'm, I just would like you to, and I know that there are several people actually on this webinar who live in that area as well. And could you just perhaps, just very general without you know, yes. being dramatic, uh, explain a little bit of the energies that are happening there and how do light workers live there to be able to do their work? This is, all right. Um, first of all, there's many small wars going on all around the world. You're just part of one of them. Um, yeah. The Middle East is a powder keg because it's an ancient thought process that, that uh, rules that area. Um, and the, the ancient thought process is that each of the 12 tribes, well, you don't see all of them, but you see many representatives of the 12 tribes, and they all have a, a, an idea of their what God is like and how he should be worshipped and how he should be seen. And each one of these will not give in to the other. And will, they have definite and permanent ideas about who God is, and they will not accept the other religion. They will not accept the other peoples. They were taught from birth to reject other religions. And this is the only one. This is it. There will be one that will come in the future and calm this peace down. However, that's not yet. But at the moment, no one will be able to tell any of them any different, and they will all be in this disagreement. And it's far worse than a disagreement because they will call it a jihad, which is a, a holy war. They will fight one another for their own belief and because they believe it so strongly. And, and what it is is really stubbornness because they all believe very similar things except for a few principles that are different so what it is is stubbornness they're just being very very adamant that this is the only way and i'm i'm sure you have relatives like this <laughs> and i'm sure you have friends like this my way is the only way but the thing is they have, somebody has to relent. Otherwise, there's going to be very big problems. Okay, so, you know, all of us here are active light workers. Of and course. And let's you, say, go ahead. Let me tell you this. Wherever you go, you will make it safe for yourself if you live in a great positivity. Now, having said that, there will be other elements that want to disturb that beautiful peace. And, you know, if it's God's will, it will be disturbed. But if it's not, then you may maintain your peace. I, but, I may share. I, yes, go ahead. Go, I want but to you will thing. find that negativity creeps in in everybody's life. Do not entertain it for long. Unforgiveness. Uh, negativity, uh, hatred, um, uh, feeling that people are against you. You cannot entertain these thoughts for long without it affecting you uh, in a long-term way. Heal yourself. Pray about it. Let this, let it go because it has to be let go. It has to be let go then peace can come. And you need that peace right now. You need it. Oh, yes. I would uh, absolutely totally agree with that. Um, and I would say that in the last few days, there's been a turn of events that has um, been able to, anyway, give me what you're talking about. This inner peace is, is uh, grounding again within the very core of who I am. So that's a good thing. But absolutely. I'm, you know, um, I am just uh, wondering about 
these places energetically at a certain vibration. I, I, yeah. you know, like, um, and so you would be saying that in the Middle East, I would be encountering energies that are even more contrasted. Like, it's not just dislike. I would be like encountering more like hate. Something that, you know, in Canada, we don't really encounter much. Just so, you know, it's like we're kind of friendly people. <laughs> you know, we well, might disagree, you but, you know, it's not that contrasting. Let me tell you this. All the grids of the earth are open. All the grids of the earth are now open. All of them. They have all been opened. Take their energy. All of the grids are now open to some extent. They will be open even more, but they are all have been worked on. They have all been, the people have been working on opening the grid, grids for a century. Now they are open. Take that energy, take that positive energy. When you go there, find those, that positive energy there. Also, you know, I know uh, so many things about that area, but you have to create your positivity. There are, there are places of positivity there. Absolutely. Find, the, find your place there uh, of positivity because you must be the, the creator of your own realm in some, in some means. If you yes. worry or are, are afraid all the time, that's going to find you. Mm -hmm. That's going to find you from the outside. If you are at peace, in love, and, uh, and experiencing positivity, yes, it might try to come in and, and change your world, of course. But only if God uh, allows it. If you're in your own peaceful, positive world, and God, and that's what God wants for you, it won't change. So I have a, just a more general question about these attacks that, you know, earlier on, one of the members talked about yeah. the Wasadraka yeah. and stuff. Why is this being allowed by God? Because God knows that people need to learn the difference between good and evil in a way that shows and is uh, exemplary uh, to the world, but he also wants you to learn how to take care of yourself in a very positive way and appreciate goodness and positivity. If you had no negativity happen to you, you would take positivity for granted. And why is the contrast, does it need to be so contrasting as this person earlier shared? It depends on who you are. Okay. It depends on who you are. Sometimes it needs to be drastic for you to find the trueness of who you are and bring out that pure positivity that is you. Now, if you cannot do that, then there is a problem. But he knows that you can. So dig deep. Rise up. And so you're, if I understand in very general terms, is that if there's a vulnerability in your vibration, it will invite the negativity to come to you so that you identify that vulnerability and you fix it? Absolutely. Okay. That's a good way to put it. Okay. All right. Grindel, you've been very happy. People think, oh, I've healed. That certain thing is healed. But when it happens again, they're just as vulnerable. They feel the pain just as deep. And they are not overcoming but they're let, allowing the pain to overcome them instead of them overcoming the pain and loving through it. And so I could say in God's love, in God's loving way, we are yeah. being shown all of our vulnerabilities to become better soldiers of light. Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay. Even me with my great and wonderful personality, <laughs> have been shown a few weaknesses not many of course but i mean of course but um everybody has to agree with that all right <laughs> so um everybody yeah okay thank goodness you all agree so that i'm pretty much perfect but then not quite 
Cobalt. Right. So, um, so I will move forward as well, and I will be tested as well, just just the same as you. If you have children, they're testing you. Yeah. <laughs> if you have right. children, I have my several children. Several. <laughs> well, Grindel, I want to thank you. This has been extraordinary and very useful information. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's not talk about my children, okay? Okay, <laughs> that's good. All right, next. Yes, um, there's a question from J-Lo. Oh, really? Jennifer yeah. Lowe Grindel? No, just <laughs> J-Lo. <laughs> oh, hold on. Go ahead. Hello, Grindel. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello. Oh, greetings. I'm very happy to speak with you. I believe this is the first time we talk. Greetings. I know who you are. Yes. Well, you know, sometimes I like to play with my thoughts and look into the future, but... Yes. I'm curious, will you and I be working together in the future? It is a possibility. You want to work with people from the outer realms. So that is a possibility. Yes. Because when you're ready, that could possibly happen definitely within your lifetime. Okay, thank you very much. I you're always take a lot from. I'd love to work with you because I see you have some extraordinary thoughts about uh, the outer realms. So that's cool. Well, Grindel, God bless you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you as well. And okay, my this children. <laughs> Yes. Oh, so sorry. There's a question from Dawn. Oh, there's my cat is here. There's a Greetings, question from Dawn. Dawn. Greetings, Grindel. Um, Greetings. On the matter of um, the, I think it was Eva, Eva comment about uh, portal openings near a person. I was yeah. wondering, it could be possible theoretically to place a torus in the core of your torus field? a um, repelling frequency using intention. Of course, yes. So that it would be reversed Everybody. to the sender. Yes, there. if you use um, a very positive energy and move that out from your inner being, it, it's much harder for the Wasadraka to attack because they do not want to come into that positive field. If you have a moment of despair and negativity and all that kind of thing, it's easier for them to get through. They can attack through positivity if it's not real strong. But if you're putting out a strong, positive energy, they won't want to go through that field. Yeah, yeah. Also, also I was going to add that if you add um, a layer of silver platinum light to that Merkaba, yeah. it'll repel all magic as well. No, all right. Uh, and you can increase the frequency of your projection through low frequency. All right, very cool. Okay. We learned right. something new today. All right, then. What other questions are there? There's a lot of other questions. There so, is. Mm -hmm. oh. Do you want to stay around to answer them or do you want to? Well, all right. Are they good questions? <laughs> Some of them are good questions. Well, ask the good ones. <laughs> um, this is from Marsha. She says she's um, going through something with her daughter. Her daughter actually attacked her, and she's wondering if Grays are involved in this. One moment. Let me uh, um Children these days are giving in to a lot of really dark ideas because it's easier to do so. It's easier to go along with the crowds than it is to oppose them. And when they go along with them, that means they're picking up a lot of negativity along the way because there's a lot of violence within youth these days. And it's they're picking that up and uh, they're, they're becoming a little army of negative uh, uh, attackers. Um, but the problem is the parents have not been strong enough with them in many senses or too strong. It, there is a vulnerability with children and you have to find the right medium 
the right the right kind of attitude in which to approach your children. But yes, there may be grays or aliens taking um, uh, some of the uh, some of these attacks. But a lot of this is just from negative energy, very negative energy that is uh, working with the youth. In the schools, it's yeah. You have no idea what the schools are like these days. They're very violent, very negative. Interesting. Okay. Um. There's a question, actually, from Richard, which is I find interesting. He says, um, he knows that reptilians have a much stronger muscle and bone structure than humans do. Correct. He's asking, is it possible to request an infusion for the knee joints? Yes, you can do that. Okay. Now, remember this. Part of your seeding was reptilian. There is some reptilian in everyone. It is blended into all the things. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It actually is a positive thing in the sense that it gives you greater vitality and it gives you um, higher immune system uh, part. A part of your immune system that's good is due to reptilian inter interbreeding. So, yes, they can give you that kind of um, that kind of infusion if you ask for it. I believe okay. I could be wrong, but I believe they can. Okay, uh, Ava has a question. Go ahead, Ava. Um, thank you. It has been, I mean, a great, great session with some questions which um, answer some of my doubts. But um, I want to ask more in relation to what Grindel said about um, if the people who are attacked are usually the one who they want to push down, which makes more sense. Um, and by the way, I was really, what Grinda said about um, being vulnerable, I was, something happened the day before, I was really vulnerable when they attacked me, so it really makes sense. Yeah, I'm right here, dear. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was seeing Karen, for some reason I'm seeing Karen, not, not you. I was seeing your guy Grinda said, and I'm, I'm sitting here right now. You okay. see when I talk, but you should see. You have. You must have your picture set on me. Yeah, I, it's yes. That's what I see. So I was like, okay. So anyway, yeah. okay. Now I have. I have. It's you. Nice to be seen. So, here, here. right here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, that's so all right. Here. Have this yeah. hand implants. A few days ago, something happened, and I didn't want to talk about it, but after this hand implant, I thought maybe I will ask about that too, because that can be good for everybody. So it looked like that I took pictures, and I thought that maybe those are insects, at, you know, on my leg. But Don't move it. Hold it. Hold it still. Okay. Yeah, so hold, near my me. right ankle, there are two places. Where I see that, yes. Spots. Oh, we'll, that, take it, we'll come and take a look at that. Because that's not normal. And another one, which is, you know, this is big spots and it's like, looks like punctuation. And I don't know, is it, it's just. It will come and take a look. Yes. But not because, right now, I'll wait till afterwards. Okay, yes. So my question yeah. is uh, going yeah. back to actually how, how do we get really into our own power? Because that's what you said, that that's what- Well, meditation and prayer, those are big parts of it. They strengthen you. And whenever you are vulnerable, you're still strong because you're with spirit, where you're with all the, the, the right functionalities of the, of the spirit and with, you're in the right place in your mind. Um, so therefore, oh, and even those that are in the right place with their mind can uh, get depressed or whatever. But the thing is, keep yourself in touch with God. Keep yourself in touch with the positivity. 
um, and you're more likely to get through that much faster. Thank you so much. And that's for everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. And I'm right here, Grindel. Grindel. <laughs> we can see. Okay. Um, there's a question from yeah. uh, Lilypad, and she said, uh -oh. Do you know a celestial being called Nefertitis? Um, this being was talking about genetics, and she wants to know. Do you know what the message would be about genetics from Nefertiti? Uh, I, if Nefertiti was a queen from Egypt, but Nefertiti yeah, is different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a different being. Um, her discussion about genetics is how the genetics of uh, humanity is changing, also how it is valuable to the galaxy and how genetics is now also going to be uh, part of your next uh, next part of your evolution, uh, along with telepathy. There will be genetic changes so that telepathy can be uh, something that you can install or bring in or whatever you want to call it that you can evolve into. Genetics has to change for these kinds of uh, things to happen. And also with telepathy, um, your whole system will change emotionally because the uh, genetics, your emotional part, portion of your brain will have to be more protected with telepathy. Mm. Does that make sense to you? But sure. you will have to also with telepathy protect the body will have to be slightly different and more protected as well okay thank you for that um there's yeah. a question from kuda saying how do wormholes work and how can a person get a wormhole to open next to someone else he's going to go trap me <laughs> yeah do they lock onto a person's biofrequency and open it through that there are several different ways that aliens have learned to manipulate wormholes. They are actually natural phenomenon, but they are actually can be created through uh, dimensional time warps and, and uh, we call them time warps, but they're actually dimensional uh, fish, uh, fissures. Mm -hmm. And uh, they open up in a circular way and pull energy through. Now, some of them become black holes because um, what happens is an implosion happens. The, this hole will open up and then it will implode upon itself, creating a dense energy field which gets denser and denser. But however, with wormholes, they can be... Uh, uh, manipulated through technology and some species uh 10 or 12 species that we know of can actually cause wormholes to open and then use technology to uh, to direct where they go and so this is a very advanced nobody under the fifth or sixth dimension knows this technology so and me being of the fourth dimension, I, we, that's something that our people are working toward but have not yet established. Okay. But we do understand uh, that there are those that uh, manipulate wormholes. Gotcha. Okay. Um, there's a question, actually, uh, Richard, the one who asked about the, um, the uh, energy, uh, what did he ask? He had asked about the the car, you know, the infusions for reptilian. Yes, you know, the knees. Like, please, he would like that, please. Oh well, all right. Um, it's not my species, but the Elias Shondai Zendi, which is a little more advanced, they're in fifth dimension. Uh, they can do that kind of thing. So I will. Uh, uh, well, hopefully they're listening and they'll. Uh, take charge of that. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, then uh, Siraposa has a question. Oh, nice name, Siraposa. Mm. I hope I said it right. Yeah. <laughs> it's Christine. Oh, uh, Christine. Sorry, Christine. I. What is, what's Siraposa? What's his name? Is your name Siraposa? No, it's my <laughs> first initial, middle initial, and last name. Nice, oh. nice Portuguese name. Okay. Um, All right. Very good. <laughs> yes, we settled that history. Um, Grindel, what I wanted to ask you, going back to the implants, um, how can, um, can we just say if um, we feel that we have an implant, can we just say um, out loud um, to have it removed? And yeah. um, If you are in human colony, Human Colony has direct access. If you are a member of Human Colony, you have direct access to the colonies and they hear okay. you. So when people call on them, they actually respond. If okay. they, there's a, a disconnect of some sort, they may take a while to respond. So say it more than once. So, okay. but to her, uh, to Pat, Rojo, uh, these do, um, many of them there will have uh, contact with humanity uh, through their uh, removal of implants. Okay. O only because um, I have asked already to have, or what would hap what happened to my elbow? And I was told somebody put an implant in there. Was it removed? And yeah, they said so, but you know, it's sore again. So I'm wondering if... Oh, well, they'll look at it. They hear you because, of course, uh, Gert Fickner is always listening in on these webinars. Okay. Uh, since, um, since you have uh, to occur as a, um, a representative or an ambassador, so right. she is always uh, there listening. Right. So what I'm what I'm getting from what Don um, had said about protecting ourselves, um, could that also be protecting ourselves from um, further implants like yes, um, pushing out? Yeah. Pushing out positive energy. Yes. Um, OK. The thing is, that also helps humanity. Right. When right. Pushing out positive energy. You're connecting stronger with everybody around you. And they see, they see and feel that. And that's a very good uh, positive impetus. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Listen to me, positive impetus. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm learning your big words. Yeah. We <laughs> just uh, scientific terms, you know. Yeah. Cranial and stuff. So... Go ahead. Yeah, next. Thank you, uh, Christine. Um, I think this is the last question I have actually for you. Um, yeah. But uh, it's from Ava, and she just typed it. And she just said, can you ask, she's saying to me, um, how do we influence each other through our thinking and emotions? Well, you can send out energy, like you said. But mm -hmm. you can pray for one another and uh, uh, do things of that nature. Prayer is an energy that works in a different way than any other energy. It's a, it goes to God, it goes to the person, and then it, it goes from God to the person. It's a huge triangle of energy, but it is very powerful. And the more powerful you believe it is, the more powerful it really is. So it's your faith and belief that strengthens prayer. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're praying, make sure that you actually are involved in the thought process of prayer. I hear people going, and they're praying um, uh, a prayer without any emotion, a prayer without any significance. It's just that they're saying it because they think that it's going to help. But it's not going to help if there's no, no, nothing behind it. They have to actually put themselves into that prayer. Like, I love this person, so I'm putting myself into that. I feel strongly that this is going to work, so let's put your emotions in your prayer. Put your thought process in your prayer. Don't just say empty prayers. 
because that's what they are, empty. They have no, they, they may have a slight energy to them because of the words that you're using. But if you're not putting yourself into them, they're not really having much, I'll use that word again, impetus. All right? All right. Thank you. Water. It was great seeing you always. All right. Yeah. Uh, or I'm gonna need. Uh, uh, is somebody else coming now? Yeah. Someone else coming? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna leave and right. let his voice recover. So, much love, everyone, and I will be back some other day. We look forward to that day. Of course, you do. <laughs> There are many collectives that want to come in, but we have been chosen to come first. Who, who are we speaking with? The Nuravi Collective. It's very nice to speak with you. There are many with similar names. Is there questions for us? Because we were summoned. Yes. Uh, collectives were summoned to this particular broadcast. Yes, you were summoned by someone in the chat from the week before, so we'll have to give them um, some time to uh, respond. There's a little delay in the YouTube. That's all right. Let me tell you about our collective. We are from Orion, oh. or parts of it. We are a collective that do, does not have a planet any longer, but travel through space. We happen to be in Orion for this time period. We are moving again to Cassiopeia in, some, in the future, and then also into the Andromeda area. We are nomadic. We are those that are studying the universe and the galaxies as we see them. We understand the nebulas quite well now, and we understand uh, your galaxy. The, you call it the Milky Way. We call it Metatora. Um, we are scientists. We are what you would call anthropologists as well. And we study uh, life forms and study all different kinds of life. There are many things in your world that are of interest to us, but we have not planned a voyage to your world yet, but that is coming because your world is in a process that we do want to study. And that is a form of evolution, evolution, I believe the word is that cannot be stopped. And so we will be in your area within the next hundred years or two. You'll, you'll be in our area via a ship? Are you traveling on a ship? We travel interspatially. We do have a kind of ship, but it is not one that is visible to any species. We are within a a field of energy that can pass through all forms. So therefore we can travel without any interruption. We go through planets instead of avoiding them. Mm. So just for our knowledge of who you are, what is it that, that we as humans could actually ask you that we could learn from you 
you know, about your, about your race, about what you represent? What is it that, that you would really have us to know about you? We are, well, what we are having people know is that we are scientists and we are studying all things of the universe. And we report these things to the Akashic Records. Some things, but the Akashic Records studies all things as well. But we are just a team from them that comes out to make sure and verify information that happens to be questionable. Do you, are you, are you carbon-based beings? Or are you? We are energy-based beings. Okay. So you have physical form and you... We can have physical form if necessary. Energy can form all kinds of matter and light. If you wish to see us as light or matter, we can formulate into that particular essence. So in science, what are you studying? Have you studied humanity? Do you study humanity? We have not studied humanity as of yet. We are planning to study it very soon. What are you, what are you studying that would be maybe grow our minds? We are in Orion. Yeah. We are studying life forms there. Uh, there are several advanced life forms here that are of interest to us and that the Akashic Records needs verification of some of the facts thereof. So you, you particularly put information into the Akash then? We verify okay. and add, yes, okay. and occasionally change information, but that is rare. Usually verification is our main objective. And but what there are, have been some occasions where information has been changed or has not been truly uh, put into the Akashic Records properly. Hmm. What dimension are you? We are a higher dimension. I do not know what dimension this would be called. That is not important. So you actually, you just focus your attention and basically you, you're able Whatever to... Whatever the Akashic Record dimension is, that is our dimension as well. Okay. All right. Um, there's a question from Lucia. Lucia. Yes, hello. Thank you for Greetings. coming. Greetings. Greetings. Now, you say that you work with the Akash. I am just wondering, you know, as human beings, we are really just, we are masters of our now. We are masters of our present. And through our present, we affect the future. And it's come to my awareness that in affecting our present, we can also affect our past. And would you perhaps be able to comment on that, please? Thank you. Present and past are objective, of course, um, but they are in all different realms of understanding. So therefore, if you change the present that was not supposed to be changed from a past uh, incident that would have, should have resulted in a certain way, then yes, you may change the past slightly but it's not enough to change um, the relative scenario of that situation. A very small thing can change the future in a great way if it moves out far enough. But with the, the thing that you changed in the present that changed in the past would have to be within a couple lifetimes. Thank you. I'm. I am a musician and I do a lot of practicing on a piece. I'll use this as an example. Maybe others can then use that for, and it might be useful for others actually. So when I take a piece of music, uh, it is an unknown piece. So I, I have to move through it and learn the notes and then the rhythm. And then once that has been learned, the interpretation comes in. And I have noticed that after a while, after several weeks of practicing, when the piece is, is flowing, it's almost as though I've always known it. And it's come to, an, an idea came in my mind. Did I jump a, a timeline to which I had already known it? 
There are different timelines that you can jump to if you have that ability. Not everyone has the ability to jump timelines. Timelines are rather firm, and most people are firmly locked within their timeline. If you are someone that is a creator being or has creator uh, elements, you may be able to jump your timelines and change your thought process within that sequence of uh, thought processes. If this happens, then you have not changed the future, but just stabilized uh, something that would have happened in your future anyway. Okay, because it was I was not doing this consciously. It's just a, a feeling. I said, wow, I think I've known this piece all my life, but I do remember practicing it for weeks on end. Exactly. Timelines can be interactive uh, with certain people, but not with everyone. And if there may be purposes for interaction with timelines, but mostly they are stable with most, most beings. 99.94% of beings are stabilized within their timeline. Okay. Uh, thank you for this information. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, you, you said that you represent several collectives, but you were the ones brought forward. Are, are you representing them now or are you only representing your collective right now? Right now we can only represent our own, but the others are similar to us in some ways. But we have a different objective than they do. Ours is scientific. Ours is to help the Akashic Records to verify all the information that is there. There are certain things that they have set us out to look at, and therefore we do look at it as they send us out to do so. Other collectives are there for different purposes. Are you doing experiments in some way, or are you just purely anthropological in your observational? Uh... Experiments are necessary for some information. How does an energy being do experiments? Very easily. There are different kinds of experiments known to the universe that uh, bring certain results. If these results are necessary for our experimentation, then we will do that particular experiment. Could you give us an example? To find um, the essence of a, a certain particular matter that might be in question, we would do uh, chemical testing on it. We would do um, energy testing on it. We do light testing on it and different kinds of scientific uh, analogies with it. There are different things in the universe that you are not yet aware of that we can also test with, but that would be one example. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions. I don't see, let me see. One there's moment, I'm sorry. In the room here, if you would like to add yes, it. Yes, please, go ahead, yes. Hello, I'm David. Greetings. I'm interested in any guidance you may have for healers and, and me as a healer to to help people and with your knowledge or anything, any guidance. Oh, energy always is helpful for healing no matter what species that you are. You are a carbon-based unit, so therefore you have our carbon-based needs. Therefore, your healing will come in an energy form that will help that that species. You are also from a world that has an electromagnetic field around it. So you will be affected by this field and by the gravitational pull of your planet. So therefore work with these different elements and your healing will be um, amplified. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Don has a question. What? Don? Don. Yes. Yes, I'm uh, a watcher by trade, and I'm on on Earth at this moment. Um, do you need any, would you consider having another home planet made? We can make a home planet if we wish. Okay. The elements of that are uh, easily, readily available to us. For the essence of the universe has all the elements that we need. 
The matrix also provides the information that we need to bring forth such a, a place. And so, yes, if we desire to make a world, we can do that, but it would be considered synthetic, even if it has all the elements of a natural planet. Okay, thank you. I was just wondering if you needed another world made, is all. We do not need one at this time. Perhaps in the future, if it is necessary for a world to be made, for our location to be stable, then we will do so. Okay, thank you very much. There's a question from the chat uh, saying, uh, has your species been featured in the Star Trek series? Our feature, we have not been featured in any of your realms that I can know of. Okay, thank you. Right. Um, yeah, thank you. Are you, are you currently able to interact with humanity uh, other than in this kind of channeling? Are you able to send energy, send healing? Is that anything that your, your group does? Or? Of course we are able to send energy anywhere we wish in the universe. So we can interact with you. Also, we have abilities to manipulate the matrixes that come through your part of space. So if someone is asking for healing, they could ask your group? We can help with that if it is divinely uh, specified. OK. Um, then I'll give you this question. There's a question from Joseph. Uh, he's saying his friend is stuck in a psychiatric hospital. Unfortunately, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a person having mental uh, issues. All information and, is valid, yes. And she's having a delusional psych. She has. She. She's having a. Um, she's having uh, hallucinations of, of a lip ring being stuck in her lip, and she's in a lot of physical pain um, and the doctors are telling her she's having a delusional psychosis and he's wondering if you can send her any kind of energy to help her get past this she needs new uh, she needs a, a replacement of neurons or neuron replace uh, what is the word she needs repair of neurons mm -hmm. um, they are dysfunctioning and uh, the synapse that they're giving her is getting a false response from the amygdala and therefore she is feeling pain in the frontal lobes and there is none because of neurons that are not functioning properly. Okay. I do not know how to say it any better. We can send energy for that but neurons would have to be replaced or repaired. Okay, so it's not really something you can... Not from this place. Okay, thank you. Um, we, we've gotten several questions. I know you addressed it before, but I'm gonna ask it again for some people that haven't, that kind of just came in. Um, the questions are, what density are you? What dimension are you? I know you said that maybe you can explain that one more time. We are not from any particular dimension. The Akashic record is outside of dimensional uh, access, and so are we. Would you call yourself the keepers of the Akash or the... We are labeled as such, but we are ones that do check on information for the Akashic records and travel quite extensively through this universe. Okay. Um, there's a question from uh, Lilypad asking, well, I, I'm going to expand your question. What can, do you use any kind of tools like crystals or sensory tools, or is it all energetically applied? Energy can become material and light. So yes, when tools are necessary, we create them and mm -hmm. use them if they are necessary. Many of the things that we study and see can be analyzed through energy alone. But if a tool is necessary, then it can be created and used. I have a question. There is a question in the room. Sure. I know you said that you were a collective. 
uh, we technically are a collective as well, but we are also our individual. Are you one collective mind or are you a collective mind with individuality? We are a collective mind with individuality, but only the individuality is to state preferences to the ways that we want to do things. We can all unite and do unite for most situations, but we are units as well. And that these particular units can have a great energy to help us pro propel ourselves to the next place. Like the Borg. Maybe. Borg. Borg. I'm not familiar with this word. Oh. <laughs> In this, um, That's a, it's a Star Trek. Ah, uh, I see the thought process. We are, we do not assimilate. <laughs> You, they, you know, people, they're working on such high realms. They're not walking around. And I don't know. Uh, and when their energy, I, I don't know. You're not actually using things like crystals, are you? I mean, crystals are, are not necessary for most situations. Crystals you are transmit something. through a crystal as opposed to use it to uh, access something or. There is information in crystals occasionally that we must access, but mostly we move through crystals and we understand them completely. They are not necessarily to be used because we are more advanced in the use of crystals. Can people visually see you? If we make ourselves visual. What would you look like? What do you want us to look like? Well, I, that's, the, that's an answer to the question. So basically, you just assume a form. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a question from, oh, there's people asking for healing. Again, I don't know if that's something you would do. We send energy to you, but we are not healers necessarily. We are scientists. We are examiners. We do some healing if necessary, but that is not our divine purpose. Okay. Don has a question. Go ahead and ask the question, Don. Yes, my question is, can neuron repair or replacement be done by intention? It by can step. to some extent, depending how strong the mind is and how strong the person is that is sending the intention. Some neuron repair is uh, available to your planet, but it is very rare. I can place neurons by intention. This is my reason for asking the question. Re then you must help some of your fellow humans. There is this need for a re neuron repair and replacement. Okay, they can contact me then on Facebook. If they are aware that they need it, they will. Okay, thank you. Some are not aware of neuron replacement or the need for it, but they are not thinking properly, and so therefore they may not know that they are need, needing this kind of repair. Right. Just one question. Thank you. There's a question in the room. Thank you. And it's probably not on track for what you were talking about, but maybe it is. Um, what are neutrinos? Neutrinos are objects that can pass through all material things. They're the smallest particle of matter known by your people. But there are smaller bits of matter that are even uh, less uh, understood. But neutrinos are considered your smallest piece of matter in the quantum realm. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, I do. And, do. and do they carry the same, do they carry the properties of everything that they pass through? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you have information? Well, you can access the Akash. So um, there's a question about um, widespread free energy technology for humanity. Is that something that we can look forward to in the not too distant future and but I mean not too distant in the lifetimes of the people here according to our our informations about futures futures of your world it is something that is coming yes 
and it is only a very small distance from this timeline, uh, in, in your timeline, I should say, that it will occur. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a person that's asking uh, about, can, do you have, can you contact other beings for, um, to ask for healing? Or there's a question that says, this is Serena. She says, um, or Serena, sorry. She said, can you ask if you can contact the positive seventh dimensional beings to give me a stump, to give me a, a stronger stomach lining infusion more than this before? Male that you're know. talking to, not a female. Exactly, Serena. It's a male. Right. Yes, we can send information to this person. Well, we can send information that will benefit this person if he accepts it properly. I believe that he has been suffering with this for a while. It, it is more advanced. Yes, it is apparently quite painful. Yes, we can send someone to do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Moonlight Rose, I don't see your question, so please post it again. If, if, as opposed to asking if your question is showing up, please post the question and then I can, because um, I can't see it, so please repost it. Someone was asking if their question had posted, but I don't know what the question was. So I don't see any other questions um, here at this moment, and we're really, we're really at the top of the, the top of the hour. We're actually a little bit late. So we will leave. Well, you can stay. There's, but we, 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 if it's only if you want to stay because we are technically out of time. Time does not exist. We will leave. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being here. Hello. Hello, Jim. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much. How do you feel? We're a little bit late, sorry for that. We went over time. Oh, oh. okay. Uh, is there any closing prayers? Do, is there any closing prayers in our room? Sure. Who would like to give one? I'll give one. Good. Okay, Don will give one. Uh, I can do one as well. It's Lucia. Okay, if you're going to do one, it would be nice if you guys turn on your camera if you can. If you can't, it's okay. Who's first? Don. Don can go first. There are great pieces of the universe that flow through you at all times. Everything that is existing is within you. Realize that you are part of the ever expanding universe and know that God is with you. There are things that you cannot possibly know that you will know soon. And these things will be opened <coughs> and your eyes will see what God will reveal. Thank you. Go ahead, Lucia. Ashasono akoli, ashosini kiri shisika. Ashosa anoni akoli kashasano akala shasani kishi. Ashasono akoli akashasini akashasaki. Ashosoni akala akoshusi anoni ke. Namaste. Let love and peace rule. Let all things that are good be here now. Let it open and expand like the lotus flower. Let all the information that is necessary come and let you know that there is great expansion in this realm ready to occur. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. So. Just once again, uh, thank you so much. Thank you to Don for the 
watching well, YouTube chat and for everything he does, but also to you, Jim, for being here. Um, also, just to remind everybody, there is still time to sign up for the fourth Ascension Workshop coming up August 8th through the 12th in Rochester, New York. It's 575. And you can get all the information for that on hucolo.org. So please, if you feel called, please go. You will have a wonderful, wonderful time. Yes, yeah. David wants to do a blessing also. If that's okay, okay, David, go ahead. Do it in the microphone. Well, is it close enough? Yeah, can Smooth you hear me? to the other side. Can you hear me okay? You can you, you're very soft-spoken, so. Yeah, he can't, we can't ever hear him. Can't ever hear him? Okay. Just, no, this here's the here. microphone right here. Thank you. Kure <laughs> Tona hate, shkukue sana hata kukua sama echi, chukua hase shelehana. Namaste, blessings. May all arrogance and pride die within you. Let God fill those places. Let him know that you, he is your pride and your joy. Let him fill your life with all the things that are necessary. Let you be grounded and let your fantasy world flee so that reality is who you become in a very positive and real way. Let all things be within you that exist. Thank you. Oh, you okay? Yeah, that was a weird one. Did you get an aftershock? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much again. And we will be back. Uh, are you back next week or no? No, you're not back next week, are you? No, I will be at, back from the workshop, which is in two weeks. That's right. The workshop is in two weeks. So people, sign up. No, I'd love for some of you to come. I know that there are some of you that want to and you just have financial problems or whatever. Please get in touch with us and we can help. Perfect. So. Um, much love to all of you, and um, there are things you need to know. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Much love to you. Bye-bye.